Hello and welcome to Intellectual Property, presented by Comicsverse. I am Andrew Rivera, and I'm here to analyze comic book TV shows, films, and their source material. Sometimes we'll say really nice things, like, Jessica Jones was such a great representation of PTSD. And other times we'll say things you might not like, like, Barry Allen probably keeps changing the timeline because of his white privilege. I'm joking. I swear I'm joking. I'm not. However, we will discuss these shows and movies with a critical eye. Each episode will tackle an issue within these works. We harp on facts, honesty, and respect, but we don't pull punches. So if you're the kind of nerd who absolutely needs their human torch white, or their Thor sporting a penis, this might not be the show for you. With that being said, let's start the show. Well, we're finally here after 15 Marvel movies, two Spider-Man franchises, and another on the way, 17 years of Wolverine, and one set of bat nipples, we've got a Wonder Woman movie. After 75 years, Diana Prince is finally leading her own film and is now eligible for Medicare. Now, you may want to point out Elektra or Catwoman, but you shouldn't. They are to comic book movies what Green Lantern is to Ryan Reynolds' career, a dark time you don't bring up unless you want to upset somebody over dinner. In honor of the first good female-led comic book movie, we wanted to ask, well, why is this the first good female-led comic book movie? Was it lack of characters? Ooh, I guess not. Perhaps it's more shameful than that. Perhaps the comic book community and the lore is not as progressive as they claim to be. Let's take a look. Characters like Fantoma and Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, may have not endured as long as Wonder Woman or Betty and Veronica, but they were some of the first examples of female characters when there were almost none to be found. Today, we have characters like Batgirl, Batwoman, Supergirl, Spider-Gwen, various male superhero counterparts, as well as more original characters like Jean Grey, Raven, Starfire, Emma Frost, Miss Marvel, and America. Female representation is currently at its all-time high in comics. But this isn't to say that we've solved all of our issues. There are still lots of problems with the way women are portrayed in comic books, whether it's writers who don't know how to write for women, using them only as love interests, or making them background characters in their own books, lack of female writers in the industry, or this. It's clear that we've still got a long way to go. That's why it's important that Wonder Woman is successful, which thank God it looks like it will be. If it were to fail, it would only be used to justify another generation of sexist movie industry choices. It seems odd that we still need to prove that after only 10 plus million dollar losses on movies like Catwoman and Elektra, that a female lead doesn't automatically doom a movie. Especially considering that from 2006 to 2015, female-led films out-earned their male counterparts. One would think that movie studios would be rushing to make more female-led content. And yet here we are. Even when male-led films are mathematically less profitable, female-led entertainment isn't getting greenlit. Can you even imagine a scenario in which a woman was obviously more qualified for something and still lost out to a man? I mean, that would be super weird, right? And if Wonder Woman somehow fails financially, we try again. Male superheroes have had such trouble performing at the box office, there should be a pill for it. Don't worry, Punisher, it happens to a lot of guys. But seriously, we're getting another Green Lantern movie after an $85 million loss on the first one. Jonah Hex was an abomination that lost 37 million. We let Shaquille O'Neal make Steel and had two Ghost Rider movies. But no one thought, no more male superheroes. If this movie does well, it opens the door for more female-led films. But if it's mediocre, it shouldn't shut that door. It never has for men. I mean, we made this guy. Batman, that's like shitting on your boss's desk and getting a raise. Now the success of Wonder Woman isn't entirely on the shoulders of Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot. Warner Bros needs to give Wonder Woman that Deadpool treatment. We need to see her everywhere and we need kick-ass action figures. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Warner Bros. needs to show confidence in their product so that others will follow, especially their competitors. Marvel pushed back Captain Marvel for other films, but when DC announced Wonder Woman and made her the focus, they got right back on track and announced Brie Larson as Carol Danvers. Which brings us to another thing. This is only the fourth film in DC's movie universe. Marvel has done 15 and five more will come before we get their first female-led film. Fans were clamoring for a Black Widow movie, but Marvel didn't comply. Again, weird considering how much money Lucy made with Scarlett Johansson. And while Ghost in the Shell was a complete box office bomb, that's probably because anime fans weren't thrilled with the whitewashing. 
What both Marvel and DC film divisions should do is take notes from their TV departments, who are fighting the good fight of pushing for strong female characters, whether they be the lead characters or supporting characters. For instance, after CBS, the All Lives Matter channel of television passed along Supergirl to the CW, the franchise turned around. They made her just as popular as The Flash and Arrow and even made a gay relationship between Alex Danvers and Maggie Sawyer one of their strongest storylines. Marvel's Jessica Jones gave us a rich and nuanced character who felt like a real person. Struggling with her mental health and inner demons, Kristen Ritter gave us one of the strongest performances from an actor in the Marvel Universe to date, as well as Rachel Taylor as Patsy Walker. We also got a story about rape and PTSD in a world where we desperately need to hear about both of those things. And you're just not gonna get that from a Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Female-led films and shows provide us with fresh stories, and it doesn't end there. When we promote female representation, we promote equality. When we promote female representation, we promote empathy. When you empathize with the struggles of fictional characters, you can apply them to the real world. When you don't promote female representation, you promote wage disparity. And speaking of, why the hell shouldn't female actors get paid as much as men? They have to kiss these f guys. I'm sure you didn't go to four years of Juilliard to make out with the King of Queens. When you don't promote female representation, you promote ignorance, and when you promote ignorance, you promote hate. We need movies and shows that are led by women. We need entertainment that represents women. We need women in the comic book industry. We need female characters that aren't just their male counterparts or love interests. We need to support women, and that isn't pandering. It's just the way things should be. We'll be right back after this. I'm Andrew Rivera, thanks for watching Intellectual Property. Our question of the week is, who are your favorite female characters from comics and why? Please let us know in the comments section below and make sure to check out Comics First at comicsfirst.com.